In this episode, I'm going to talk about how a mathematician beat the lottery and how you can too. Now, when I talk about how you can too, it's not the lottery, it's the lottery that applies to you. Stick around and you'll see what I mean. In a world of incompetent bosses, micromanagers, and petty tyrants, you are listening to The Leader Smith. Now, here is your host, Darren Gertis. Before we begin, click the subscribe button. If you get some value out of it, please click the thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. Okay, so I found this great article about how this mathematician, this retired mathematician, has been beating the lottery for years. In fact, it was such that the FBI was actually looking for him, like trying to figure out how this, does this guy keep winning? And they were investigating him, and they just found out he figured it out. So before we get into the lottery, let me put a few caveats first. One, don't play the lottery. I, the, the lottery is a tax on those who are bad at math. This guy was really good at math, but don't play the lottery. I don't play the lottery. I've never lost, okay? I know you have to be in it to win it, but um, it's, it's just a bad idea. Uh, the, the odds are always on the house, which is the government that runs the lottery. Okay, as I was looking at this article, it led me to some other articles. I just started to Google, like, you know, what are your chances of winning? Well, your chances of winning, like, Mega Millions are 1 in 302 million, or Powerball are 1 in 292 million. That's that's your odds of winning. Very slim, very unlikely. I mean, you, you're likely to get struck by lightning a few times in a row before you're going to win that. I also looked up uh, other articles about winning the lottery, chances of increasing your probability. I found this one from the Jerusalem Post. This is going to be the best advice that we would generally have before we look at how the mathematician did it. So the best advice for the average guy in the Jerusalem Post about how to win the lottery was this. One, to increase your probability of winning, you need to buy more tickets. Well, duh. I mean, if you buy more tickets, obviously you're going to have greater chances of winning the lottery. Okay, number two, uh, form a lottery syndicate where you gather money from lottery players. And so that means you have more tickets, but then you split it more ways if you win. If you have 10 people all buying the tickets, well, okay. So it's the same thing, just said it a little bit differently. Number three, don't choose consecutive numbers. Okay, that may or may not matter. Number four, don't choose a number that falls in the same number group or ending with a similar digits. I don't know why that matters. It, it, it actually doesn't matter because this is all random. You have as much chance of winning with these numbers as those numbers because it's all random. Number five, look for more unpopular games played at odd times. Now that one is actually a key to why this mathematician won. He was playing a different game. Number six, uh, better if you play less popular games with fewer players so you have less competition. That also was part of this mathematician's strategy. Number seven, some people play lotto based on the numbers of their birthday or birthday of a family member. I don't know how useful that is. Number eight, keep in mind that every number in the lottery has equal probability of being chosen as the winner. Now that's the key. This is why this is so, uh, it, it looks like maybe, maybe you're going to get lucky. No, it's random and any number number combination is as good as the next. So just understand you're not going to game the lottery when it's like that. But there are some games that can be gamed and this mathematician did. Number nine, play the right games. And that is the key to this mathematician success. Okay, so that brings me to the actual article. This was an Entrepreneur Magazine not too long ago. It said this retired mathematician won 26 million from state lotteries legally. His name was Jerry Selby. The article was written by a man named Gene Marks. And Jerry Selby is a retired mathematician. He's in his late 70s, almost 80, something around that age. Uh, and he's just been playing the lottery for years. But he's a mathematician who understands how statistics and probability worked. And the, the game that he chose was strategically chosen. He didn't play Powerball, where the odds are staggeringly against him. He played a game called, it's in Michigan, it was called Windfall. Now, what you have to do in the Windfall Lottery is there are a field of 49 numbers, and you have to match six of them. Now, in this particular lottery, if you match all six, you win. But the way that it worked was, if you don't match all six, 
somebody who matched all five wins. And if nobody matched all five, then somebody who matched four wins. And then if nobody matched four, it rolls. So it's windfall. It There's this thing called the roll down from six to five to four to three. And so he figured, hey, the odds here are pretty good. If you can match five or if you can match four, then you're going to be a winner. Now, Selby has a degree in mathematics. He went to uh, Western Michigan University and he just said, and there's this fascinating 60 minutes interview with him as well. And he was like, well, I just took, you know, three minutes. I calculated out the odds of that I would uh, win if I bought a certain number of tickets. And that's what he did. He bought a certain number of tickets where there was a probability of winning. And he said um, he he purchased a thousand one hundred eleven hundred dollars worth of lottery tickets, and he said with that he had a pretty good shot of having at least one ticket match four numbers, and that would win him back a thousand. So he would spend out one thousand one hundred, and he would have a pretty good shot of winning one thousand. But out of that, he would also have a number of tickets that were likely to have three of the numbers. And so with the three of the numbers, he had a good shot at winning more money. Okay, so each of these tickets would bring in another 50 or bring him up to $1,900. So his investment of $1,100 would bring him an average return of $1,800. So he's essentially making $1,800 every time he does this um, because he understood the odds and the probability. Now, sometimes you want a little bit more, sometimes you want a little bit less, but that's how it worked. And so he described it as like this, and the author from Entrepreneur said this, quote, do this over a number of years, seven times a year, spending as much as $600,000 each time. And well, you get it, over time, Selby amassed 26 million in winnings with a net profit of eight million dollars before taxes now that's pretty amazing eight million dollars he made over that time now he understood the statistics and probability and if you want to see the statistics as well i've linked the article from the journal of american science that breaks down all the math that he encountered in this because of the way that the game was set up now, state officials got wise to this. They shut down this rollover kind of game and no longer do it because he was gaming the system and they were losing millions of dollars because of him. But <laughs> as he said in the uh, 60 Minutes interview, it was just basic arithmetic. And he was like, when he's being interviewed, he's like, well, well duh. I mean, it's, it was easy to see. <laughs> um, something that the interviewers couldn't wrap their minds around, he could see it because he was trained to be able to see it with his background in, in mathematics and statistics. Now, that leads me to my actual point. If you want to be excellent at, at anything, be excellent, learn, train, become what you should be in order to, to learn that thing. Um, <laughs> the, the author of the Entrepreneur article wrapped up by saying this, and I think this is really great advice. Want to succeed in business? Know your numbers, know your margins, know your costs, know how to calculate profit percentages on individual sales, know what impact a cost increase will have on your operations, know your break-even point, know your turnover, are you comfortable with running the numbers in your head so as to determine whether or not a deal makes sense? Even while in the midst of a negotiation, you better be. If not, then you better hire someone who is. Now that's great advice. So if you know your, the game that you're playing, play that game. Now I'm not talking about just the lottery. In fact, I'm not even talking about the lottery because now here, here's one of the things that he did. He chose a game that actually worked in his favor. It wasn't just randomness and chance. He had calculated out a win-loss ratio and why it would be in his favor. So that set that aside. The lottery in general, most gambling in general is not going to do that for you. So you have to do what suits you best. Look, if you're six foot 11, play in the NBA, don't try to be a jockey because jockeys need to be really small to fit on that horse and be very lightweight. NBA players need to be very large, so find what suits you. Um, and I'm going to talk about this more in another episode, and I'm going to link that at the end because this is what Donald Trump did. He did those things that suited him where there was not a lot of potential loss and there was a lot of upside. And I'm going to talk about that, or I did talk about that in episode 40, and again, I'm linking this. Um, 
in episode 40, you know, when Donald Trump was going to do The Apprentice, there was all upside and no downside or almost no downside. That's the way that you want to think about it. You want to think about, Warren Buffett talks about this, about not losing money. He talks about, you know, setting himself up so that here's only upside. And that's how you need to think about whatever endeavor you get into, where, where's the upside, where's the downside, are you suited to be doing that thing? So if you can do that, you can win your own lottery. Now, it's not going to be the lottery, but look, I'm a professor, right? I spend a lot of time reading. I get leverage. I get a certain amount of leverage just by having spent more time reading. So I've, I've read 100 books a year for at least 15 years that I've tracked it. And probably before that, I was about at 100. So when I do that, over time, I learn things. I There's compound interest. Compound interest. Einstein, Warren Buffett talk about how compounding, the compound effect. Darren Hardy has a great book, The Compound Effect. When things compound, it grows, you become better, faster, more able to do things. Now, I should keep doing what I'm doing because over time, I'm going to get better at it and better at it and better at it, as opposed to shifting gears right now and doing something else and lurching this way or lurching that way and doing this or doing that and trying, right? I should, as I do this, I'll be better. I'm going to win my lottery. It's not the lottery, but it's my lottery. And you need to think about what it is that you can be excellent at where you can win too. And that brings me to the quote for contemplation for today. It's by Archimedes. He said this, give me a place to stand with a lever and I'll move the world. Now that's talking about leverage. It's about using what you have that's able to do more than just your raw muscle power. But how are you able to think differently? How are you able to, to move this differently? What advantages do you have that you can use in this place? Okay, I'm about out of time, but listen, here's what I want you to do. Leave your comments below and let me know what else I missed in this process. Tell me what it is that we could talk about more to help you understand this process even better. And hey, if you enjoyed this episode, please think about subscribing and liking. I'm trying to help you become the kind of leader that you would want to follow. Mm -hmm.